يا من هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الخالق الباري المستمر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I seek refuge from the evils of Satan and I begin in the name of God Almighty the most gracious the most merciful this is a presentation of the electric mosques presentation of the teachings of Islam and I'm your friend your host your brother Haji Dr. Ocean Khan this morning, as I sojourn out of Guyana, I felt inspired after Fajr Salah to do some readings and writings on things that I had done in connection with humanity and love and goodwill. And so, so this could be this presentation could be a form of an electric mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam. It could be also a message through the Universal Peace Federation International Georgetown, Guyana, as it pertains to human development, love and peace. I have here this magazine, which I had introduced to you some time back. And these are some of the top players of humanity in 2021, according to the founder of the World Civility Movement, Dr. Clyde Rivers, who is also uh, a king in Africa, Ghana, a, a state there. He's considered to be a king. Now, I have in this magazine an article, a statement of interfaith religion by Dr. Ocean Khan. There. Then I have another magazine of uh, written and prepared by this amazing gentleman. Um, and uh, I was asked to do an article in it and it is called uh, according to what he had found, he asked me to write, Finding Purpose in Pain. So I'm hoping that as I, I will have enough time in this presentation um, to do them both. If not, I'll have to move to another part two. All about human development, growth, not so much about me, even though it might be centered somewhat on me, my experience could make it easy for some people who are in my situation. And this magazine was done by Dr. Rubin, West World Civility Ambassador. And for yours, your understanding to your brother, me, Haji, Dr. Ocean Khan, is also a World Civility Ambassador. And through the Universal Peace Federation, an international ambassador for world peace. So let me find the, the spot and start to make this presentation, my beloved divine friends, family, brothers and sisters. So I thought it best that instead of starting with the presentation I made in this book, I would start with the viewpoint of your story. Now he gave all the, the contributors a viewpoint of his understanding of them. And here is your brother, me, Haji, Dr. Ocean Khan. Now, um, he's saying, who is Dr. Khan? And then I have a statement of interfaith religion. And I want to bring this wisdom out um, for it's all uh, on peace and goodwill, love and harmony. So, let me find out again. Um, 
who is Dr. Roshan Khan? Uh, from His Excellency King Okoyiman Amisa I, also known as Sir Clyde Rivers. And this is the gentleman, highly regarded in the United States of America, Europe, and around the world. So who is Dr. Roshan Khan? It takes a lot of patience, dedication, and hard work to reach the top of one's profession, and it's hard to keep that position. Take, for instance, Haji Dr. Roshan Khan, who has been in various businesses and served in various capacities for over 42 years. The story of Haji Dr. Ocean Khan, one of Guyana's most renowned and respected businessmen, is filled with determination, hard work, and commitment. The exceptional business entrepreneur has a motivation and disciplined personality, which has stood out in stark contrast with his peers since childhood. And that is true. I was different from all my friends. And I turned out completely different. I'm not going to say that I'm more successful because success is measured for different personality, different people in different ways. But I was very different. I was not one who would be hanging with friends, moving here and there, and allowing peer pressure to have an impact on me. So I go back to the article. Thus, it is hardly surprising that he was able to take $7.50 Guyana dollars or 0 0.036 US cents capital investment and an old motorcycle and turned it into a national security network. In excess of a thousand job opportunities to date, he has also diversified and established a number of additional subsidiaries through this network, including RK's EcoStar Motors, RK's Institute of Motoring, RK's Dragnet Satellite Tracking, RK's Royal Realtors, and RK's Enterprises and Investments. Now, there are times when I have employed, through God, for it is all through His will, my beloved divine friends, family, brothers, and sisters, up to 3,000 people around the country of Guyana. And our service moves from the jungle, the Amazon jungle, deep in the interior areas, the coastline, the townships, and throughout Guyana. So I'm just giving you some idea that with determination and with prayers and blessings from God and with discipline, one could achieve anything. Haji Dr. Roshan Khan is renewed for continuously learning and developing himself and others. He recently earned his honorary doctorate in peace and religious studies from the United Graduate College and Seminary International, which I must mention to you, is recognized in the United States of America um, by the bodies that recognizes awards such as these and institutions such as these. And I go back and then went on to pursue another degree in human development from the Atlantic International University. At the young age of 65, he earned his Master's in Ambassadorship of Diplomacy from the United Graduate College and Seminary International. Dr. Khan is a proud Ambassador for Peace for the Universal Peace Federation and served as the national chairman for the Guyana chapter. He was awarded the Gold Peace Medal by the said organization. He has traveled to many countries on behalf of this federation to deliver peace talks, help with conflict resolution, and read peace messages. In the year 2000, he was invited by the Indian Council for International Cooperation to prepare and deliver a paper to an audience of over 5,000 people, attended by then Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vijpai on the topic contributions of Indians in the politics and economy of Guyana. While he has achieved all in the realm of business, he wishes to continue to pen books, since he enjoys writing, especially poetry that focuses on womanhood and motherhood. 
some of his most recent work, Living Tribute of Love to Mom, was well received along with My Words, My Vision, My Thoughts, Part 1, except from his record of public activism for the enlightenment and peaceful development of his beloved nation, Guyana. Haji Dr. Ocean Khan is also a stage and local movie actor, educational, cultural, and dynamic movies. He was a commissioner of the Ethnic Relations Commission and was a member of the board of directors of the Prison Sentence Management Board. He even founded the International Islamic Peace Ambassador Network and serves as chairman. He was also a member of the board of directors of the Guyana Responsible Parenthood Association, a retired board member of the Muslim Youth League, a current director and member of the Anna Katharina Islamic Complex and co-founder and president for several years of the Agayan Islamic Forum for Education, as well as chairman of the Latifan Civic Center for Goodwill built in honor of his beloved mother, who is still alive at 90 years of age. Unfortunately, now, at this date, in 2023, ladies and gentlemen, my mother has recently passed at the age of 91. God bless her soul. A great mother she was. For peace and religious solidarity, he received awards and special titles, titles as Dharma Rakshak, Protector of Religions, by the Hindu Community Awards for Peace Work in South Korea, Japan, and India by the Unification Movement and the Universal Peace Federation. He was also awarded a special honor by the University of Guyana Hindu Society. While in semi-retirement, he hopes to pursue his humanitarian and spiritual paths more fully and attentively while serving the country and humanity at large. And so, beloved divine friends and families, brothers and sisters around the world, um, a statement on interfaith religion by Dr. Oshin Khan. Deeply understanding that we are all brothers and sisters as one human family under God is the key to unlocking our individual sense of service, imbued with the unwavering belief that we have the power to make a difference. We can be the spark that ignites the sea of change for the betterment of humanity. And that's my introduction by Haji Roshan Khan. Mankind is a single nation. I'm a firm believer in working together and respecting all religions rather than looking for faults and flaws. I prefer to look at how religions are alike. My loving mother, Hajin Latifan Khan, was my first religious influence and model of cooperation, tolerance, and cohesiveness. I recall quite vividly when she would make sweets and distribute them to the neighbors whenever there was any religious occasion. And I mean any religious occasion. For these simple acts, I admire her purity and compassion for everyone, as she symbolically tore down the walls that divided us and build bridges to allow our various communities to coexist together in love, joy, and harmony. Now here's a, some time ago when she visited, I don't know if you could recognize her, many of you in Guyana know her, um, God bless her, and she's gone. And that's when I sit and I sat and I prayed with her as I was taking her to the airport. I was also inspired by a Christian pastor from the Church of the Nazarene who taught me, a Muslim, how to tie a Welsh knot and a tie. My other inspiration were Brother Ned of the Jehovah Witnesses, along with many pundits, imams, priests and others who encouraged me to see the oneness of God and the oneness of humanity from the heart. Consequently, my love for all religions and peoples led me to study the Holy Bible the Bhagavad Gita and all the texts, the Holy Quran and all the Islamic scriptures along with works of other faiths. Through this I have discovered that all religions teach one supreme God and of cohesiveness among peoples of all religions. I have learned also that the majority of religious differences are essentially the consequence of culture and the desire by some to dominate others. 
Take, for instance, the Holy Quran, which teaches, Quran 2, 213, that mankind is a single nation. The Holy Bible also teaches that the human race is one, as Paul preached to the Athenian philosophers, from one man God made every nation of the human race, that they should inhabit the whole earth. Acts 726. Hinduism also teaches that all religions are true. This is underscored in chapter 15 of the Bhagavad Gita, where it states there is a banyan tree which has its roots upward and its branches down, and whose leaves are the Vedic hymns. One who knows this tree is the knower of the Vedas. The world tree, or cosmic tree, now I'm giving an explanation, is said to have roots above and branches below, because the tree originates from one supreme. It is considered to have roots above ground, when there is just one source of the tree. It is evident that all religions, sects and their founders are descended from the same God. All religions are equal and there is inherent oneness among all religions. I am of the belief that most cultural issues in a country are the result of foreign interference for supremacy. Before being invaded, many nations in South America and the West Indies worshipped the same God. People went about their daily lives in their own unique way. They had their own medicine, skill and dances, among other things. When you look at countries like Africa, you can see how foreign invaders infiltrated their societies, interfering with, their, with people's minds and altering their customs, albeit enormous cruelties and enslavement, as history have shown. As part of World Summit 2020 in South Korea, I was invited to speak as a Muslim leader on Islam and international peace and cohesion before an audience and delegates from 150 countries, which was also broadcast virtually to hundreds of millions of people worldwide. The event was organized by the Universal Peace Federation, which is headed by Hak Jaha Moon and the late Reverend Dr. Sun Myung Moon. As a special invitee to address this distinguished group of leaders, which included heads of state and parliamentary officials, religious and spiritual leaders, as well as women and civil society leaders who were all dedicated to dialogue and collaboration for peace and human development. It was an honor to make a presentation based on the Universal Peace Federation's ideology of one human family under God. That is to say, we are one family under God, from one God who created for a single purpose. As Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God Almighty be upon him, taught us in his last sermon. All mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab. Also, a white has no superiority over a black. Nor a black has any superiority over the white except by piety and good action. Further, the Quran teaches to each of you we prescribe the law and the method. Had Allah willed, he would have made you one nation united in religion, but he it intended to test you in what he has given you. So race to all that is good, to Allah is your return altogether, and he will then inform you concerning that over which you used to differ. So God Almighty made us different, with in each nation different laws and different customs. But the basic thought of the one God is, and the creator, Allah, Yahweh, Om, Allah, Allah, as Jesus Christ said when he was on the cross, peace and blessings of God be upon him, is one. Humanity is one. And we must not use any differences, whether in religions, culture or practices, to create hate, pain, 
torture and warfare, my beloved divine friends, family, brothers and sisters. The coroner also state, O oh mankind, indeed we have created you from a male and a female, and made you peoples and tribes, that you may know one another. Indeed, the noblest of you in the sight of God is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah, God Almighty, is knowing and acquainted, aware. Quran 49, 13. Most of you brothers and sisters of Islam and otherwise might just want to keep that quote. Quran 49, 13. So what exactly is righteousness? It must go beyond tolerance. It entails tolerating other religions and people since God created variety for a reason. He created animals of various species, goats, sheep, cows, humans, and so on, to, to satisfy humanity's diverse hearts. He created the plants, the trees, and fruits, each with its own species and variety of hues. God loves variety. He might have created everyone Christian, Hindu, Muslim, or any other faith, as well as black, white, brown, or any other color. However, as previously said, God values diversity which is why he bestowed various rituals, beliefs, and customs on various peoples, laws, and customs, as I said earlier. What is the connection? What is the nexus of humanity? It is the realization of the one human family under God, which is preached by all the religions of the world, not just the main faiths, but all religions from time immemorial to modern civilization taught love, peace, cohesion and joy amongst humanity. This, is my, this, in my opinion, is the nexus of religions and the nexus of the creation of humanity. God is not concerned with whether you are a Muslim, Hindu, Christian or Jew. Rather, he's concerned with your righteousness. And there could be more explanation to that. As a result, we should strive to live as one human family. Since God uh, will reveal how similar we are, all are on the Day of Judgment, regardless of our varied religious beliefs, consequently I have the conviction that interfaith, tolerance, respect and compassion for all peoples may be the strong force that can help heal the world. According to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him, the best among you are those who have the best manners and character. It makes no difference if you are a Muslim, a Hindu, a Christian, a Jew, or follow another religion according to Islam. The finest among us in the eyes of the Creator, Lord God of the worlds, is the one with the best manners and character, independent of creed. I have always believed that regardless of your faith, you should be the best person you can be and fill your heart with righteousness. Strive to be the greatest you can be in the service of to mankind, to God and environmental conservation. As a result, as one human family under God, we must recognize that the scriptures are all interconnected. We must realize that each scripture may have been a development of revelation rather than a division or elimination. I want to read that back again. We must realize that each scripture may have been a development of revelation rather than a division and elimination. These are my thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. As a forward thinker of peace and unity, of positivity in the world, these were necessary as civilization, mental capabilities and the growth of knowledge and thinking evolved with humans. Guyana, I'm pleased to add, has become a beacon of interfaith cohesion because this was the way of our ancestors. The invaders and conquerors came along and brought in the Africans who had been subjected to extraordinary trauma. The dazzling distinctive difference and colorful culture of the Africans was eventually taken away. Christianity was imposed on them. Following that, our Indian ancestors were brought in. When our Indian ancestors arrived, they couldn't speak English. Our African brothers and sisters taught our ancestors how to speak English and the ways of the New World. Our indentured ancestors from India collaborated with the liberated Africans to foster cohesion, goodwill and trust 
and they learned from one another. Furthermore, when our Indian ancestors arrived, they brought their faith, which was mostly Hinduism and Islam. When they arrived, two peoples emerged from the SS with me, leading the others. One was a Muslim named Khan, and the other was a Hindu named Rama. The name Rama Khan was coined to symbolize the power and harmony of Muslim and Hindu cohesion. Despite past masters' attempts to divide and dominate our people, Guyana became a model of interfaith harmony. However, throughout the generations, politics has been used to divide our people for decades. Our people, on the other hand, are versatile and extremely wise. So much so that when visitors come to Guyana, they are curious as to how we have successfully coexisted with such diverse ethnicities, six races with varying religions, and now they are saying seven race because of the mixtures. Here in Guyana, we are truly blessed to live in a country where we can hear the Muslim call to prayer, as well as the church and temple bells and chants from our windows. Coexistence and harmony, in a nutshell, are the nature to us as a breathing. First, our First Nation predecessors, as the Aborigines, the original people, we call the Amerindians or the indigenous. Then our African and Indian ancestors, who put their lives in bondage where their souls were drained for us, who paved the way for the Chinese and Portuguese to follow, and all of the other generations to come. With their blood and sweat, our ancestors have watered our soils and have made Guyana unlike anywhere else in terms of interfaith, cohesion and peace. My beloved divine friends and family, there ends the introduction to me by Sir Clyde Rivers, His Excellency King Okoiman Amisa I, also known as Sir Clyde Rivers, and my presentation in this book, which has gone worldwide. So I wish to just recite a little bit the chant that you all usually like. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah, those of you who are unwell, I pray that God may bless you. We may put a water nearby so the words may catch the water in a beautiful vibration. You may try to touch my hand through the power of God, through his holy Quran, and that you may be blessed for some say they are. They feel better when they touch the fingers or they touch the Quran or they put the water, they sprinkling on themselves and those who may be unwell. Bismillahir Rahmani Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Arahmani Rahim Maliki Yom Medin. Iyakana Budu wa Iyakana Sta'in. Allah heal and bless. Ihidna Sirat al Mustaqeen Sirat al Ladina Unamta Alayhim. Khairahil Makdubi Alayhim Wala Dodi. Bless and heal our nation, our peoples, and all those who are sick in Guyana and around the world who you, with your power, O Allah, can heal. And those who you have to take, O oh Allah, take them in peace and quietude back to you. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Wallahu Akbar, Wallahi alham. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, ah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Go with God in peace and goodwill, and may all your travail and pain be eliminated, and may we all raise to peace in glory. Your friend, your brother, me, 
Haji, Dr. Roshan Khan saying thank you and farewell, beloved, divine friends and family. Ya man huwa Allahu allazi la ilaha illa huwa ar-rahman ar-rahim al-maliku al-quddus as-salam al-mu'min al-muhaymin al-aziz al-jabbar al-mutakabbir al-fa'ir 